Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here in the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues at A to Z series which we're playing now as Eureka. Led by Portmaster Smith. My lurks are one battle I'm willing to fight. People are an entirely different creature. Lurks have shells, people have minds. That's all you need to know. In 2239, Dennard Smith became the first portmaster to take Eureka after leading his men into battle and successfully defeating the Mylurks that threatened the city, being forced into the position due to the death of the actual portmaster leaders during the final fight. Despite not being a natural uh, leader, Smith's martial prowess and leadership earned him the respect of his peers, although Smith now commands a loyal army in a reclaimed home. He lacks charisma and political skill. He can easily be outmaneuvered by the growing Granite Company presence or the actions of a rapidly changing Arroyo. While Smith has some understanding of the threats posed by the NCR and Arroyo, he is not a skilled uh, statesman and is not focused on establishing an efficient administration or infrastructure projects. With the city now under his control for over 35 years, Smith must now find purpose for his elite army and ensure the safety and prosperity of Eureka in the face of external threats, but desolation. Eureka faced the misfortune of a barely avoiding a direct hit during the Great War. The ocean took the full force of the strike instead, mutating the natural food source of the area. Let's see, claws and long fangs. The nuclear devastation that awaited Eureka <clears throat> was avoided, but at a great cost. The missile was off target and instead slammed into the waters outside the city's port. While the radiation effects were alone to kill or incapacitate many, the horrors that emerged from the diseased sea were nearly extraterrestrial. Worst of all, Eureka had survived primarily through fishing and trading through its port, making even the existence of these mutated creatures a threat to their survival. The portmaster was held together in this town, a local militia which protected us all. Under the portmaster's guidance, we learned to trust each other, to never give up, or to rebuild what we could. I'm gonna go with stability. 10% is more than 8% usually, so. The pirates, drunks, and horrors. I love them all! Eureka's relative isolation meant its main and natural resource, fertile farmland and fisheries, were of little use at first, but, like so many other towns in history, it found that you can export mercenaries, and then the Granite Company. To the town of old Eureka wrote a stranger one fine day, hardly spoke to folks around him, didn't have much to say. No one dared to ask his business, no one dared to make a slip, but the stranger there among them had a plasma on his hip. A plasma on his hip. But a regulated industry. There's no other Eurekan saying, Peace is good for business, war is good for business. The crew from Eureka's marina took control of the town after the bombs fell, but the lands around Eureka were too poor and too lightly populated to rule anyone. Why bother instead? The marina began offering themselves out for protection, a season campaigning, then returned home for the winter. In a mere generation, they were known as the Portmasters, a rough and ready band. But the Portmasters had their limitations. Eureka lacked heavy weaponry or advanced schematics, and faced a chance of falling behind, and so in 2150, a new gang came to Eureka. The Regulators were once the heroes of the Boneyard, a militia company who kept this town safe, but in 2141, the Vault Dweller, Corrupted by the honeyed words of local raiders, turned the town against them. The men and women who fought and died to keep one of California's first towns safe fled as far as they could, uh, looking for a home. And they found one in Eureka. To quote Caleb, this is a good and peaceful place. Here I shall rest my gun above the mantle. They brought special forces training. I doubt us how to hold a position. Learn how to live off the land. I like attack, especially since we have elements of the Enclave here. But after that, let's identify some threats. Too much time spent focusing on our own plight has blinded us to our neighbors. Thankfully, none pose an immediate threat to our freedom, but that doesn't mean we can't be cautious. Ooh. The turning wheel. The regulators weren't the only Californians to flee to Eureka, seeking a better life. Beginning in, beginning in the 2240s, the Habologists walked north, seeking a land free of the sheep's persecution. The Habologists are called con artists and charlatans, but that is base slander. They believe that life, the universe, and everything are a turning wheel. With their scientific beliefs, the children of Dar Dick Hubel try to cleanse the waste of the Neurodines that almost destroyed mankind, but Thrakazog, the pothole stuck our wheel, and his agent from Arroyo drove us out of San Francisco. To Eureka we came, and Eureka we remain. It is in this little town that the Habologists work for the Great Uplifting, and it brings us home to the Star Father and Quetzal. Down with the oppressives. But the tales of Granite Company. Kiss America goodbye, boys. These were Granite's last words. As the rigging exploded and his boys and girls fled Navarro, while hardliners fled east of Chicago in the capital, Granite led those who couldn't either reach the evac zones or didn't want to. A group left behind, forgotten. Of course, they turned to the wasteland's most precious commodity, war. For three decades, the Granite Company fought and died, carefully maintaining falling, failing power armor. As the radio carried words of a new president in the East, some heroes, devoted to fighting the mutant threat, traveled on. Some of them stayed and died, and after years of fighting, there was no one left devoted to the Enclave's dreams. The Granite Company had many customers, but few rules stood out. But he especially disliked the dogs of the NCR. Eureka. Oh, nice, nice. Granite Company drifted through the waste for decades, but there was never a great place to find home. Reno was too hot once the Salvadores fell from power. A ball city extracted some, but the NCR garrison made many veterans uncomfortable. A Seattle, nice place. Before the Brotherhood showed up, MacArthur, technically Granite Company, committed treason in aiding the Chosen One and killing Frank Horrigan. What to do? 
By this point, Yuriki was home to several groups of mercenaries. What was one more? And so the last enclave troops on the west coast set themselves up as mercenaries in the bomb half of nowhere. Old soldiers never die. Fortunately, some versus they just faded away. The next generation. Um, I'm not sure which one we really want uh, to go with the enclave. I think you have. It sounds like old soldiers never die. You should do that one. But you lose so much manpower, as well as experience gain. They just fade away. I like this one more though. The next, you, but you get the next generation, which sounds like you should get them. Fortunate son, Granny grew up on the campaign show with his father, learning from radical officers, malcontent grunts, and jaded followers. He painted vertebrates of Coover, supplied or souped with real soldiers along the river, and learned much from the people, much to his father's chagrin. He went, in a way, native, but he never placed roots and never found a home. Granite Company just marched to the wastes, the only constant being cash for the soldiers and taps for the fallen, until a chilly day in November 2274 when the taps played for granite. And so passed the last American for Granite Company and the last of the Western Enclave that was up to Granite to write the epilogue. He's sitting on the old campgrounds and in the later the bearer. As years went on, Eureka ran into a problem. The NCR was too darn successful. Who needed to hire mercenaries when California had a standing army of thousands of men with bloody mechanized units? Protecting Brahmin caravans was well and good, but it couldn't pay the way raiding Vault City once did. The NCR increasingly viewed Eureka as inconvenience and embarrassment. A dinner of trouble on his boards, instead some felt it was only a matter of time before the NCR simply occupied Eureka to restore order. Some mercenaries moved east or north, while others cashed out. And if you wondered if Eureka would have to find some other way to support itself, but whatever Eureka did would attract the NCR's interest. And there was a chance the Republic would simply solve the problem once and for all. Small businessmen always get the short end of the stick, but Eureka's mercenary army. Uh, Eureka works differently from almost any other nation. Instead of a normal standing army, they're they are involved in conflicts across the west coast. In exchange for cash and army experience, they cannot train new divisions regularly and have a limited, extremely limited industry, but instead raise divisions and equipment through special decisions. Mercenaries can be sent through the Send Volunteers button on the Diplomacy screen. Oh. Diplomacy screen. Look at this. Diplomacy. <laughs> um... Sending mercenaries, so long as a nation does not already have mercenaries from Eureka, results in an automatic payment of $40, and leveling up your starting generals provides an additional payment of $25. Only your starting generals and those gained by focuses and events grant the $25 payment. You must have a presence in a nation's port in order to send the mercenaries. At the game start, Eureka has built a presence from the southern tip of Baja to the Washington Brotherhood's Capitol Hill. Focuses may expand your reach to new ports and therefore new conflicts. So, so results uh, sent through the Send Volunteers button on the Diplomacy screen. So, we can't send them here. Can we send, what is it? Brother's always at war, right? Due to a modifier. But they're too far away. Um, so they're killing each other up here and we can't send volunteers. Anyone else is at war? Legion? Uh, I don't think we want to send the Legion volunteers. They're too far away too. They don't have a port anyways. Rusty Hooks? I'm pretty sure Rusty Hooks is actually just a generic tree. Two additional offsides. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, this looks pretty generic. Oopsie. Alright, so the... Brotherhood Yakima, the Far Sons, a Highland Watch War. That's probably way too far. Yeah. So, send a volunteers button. Okay. I see. Mercenaries. In order to see where you can send mercenaries, open the drop-down menu on the top bar, where you'd normally find the Core States button. Course, on the Core States. Look for the Additional Map Modes button near the bottom. Nothing there. This one. Oh, what was on the right side here? Someone's on the right here side. So, see where you can send them drop down on Uncord States. There's no other button here, though. See, there's nothing there. Um, look for the additional map modes near the bottom. What's this open change of filter from countries to volunteer targets? Oh, maybe you go here? Manage subjects, collaborations. Um, once you open, change filter from countries to volunteer targets. All countries in green are valid targets for volunteers. Completing focuses will increase the number of tar available targets to intervene in. Wow, how convenient. Well, I mean, it's not, it hasn't popped up in miscellaneous tab, right? Not a diplomacy. From a country list. Um, Western Brother Legion, ruler elites, intellectuals by ideology. West Coast, Opinion, look at the bottom, nothing's there. I don't think we can send anybody yet, because you just go here and you go like, oh, I want to send some volunteers. There must be war. Most people are not at war, so. I guess I'll have to wait and see. I'm not really sure. So, we're going to be identifying threats, and maybe contact the Sheep. 
In the Battle Territory is an important source of raw materials for the Sheed due to their close relationship with the NCR. We may not be able to match at the same level of relations with this mysterious faction, but we we'll still have benefit from approaching them. Um, what else do we have here? So we've got a couple things here. I'm using Overall Blues, Overall Blues Radio. Uh, fast justification technically just because I want to go to war faster, or see if we can go to war faster at all. Uh, I think that might be it. And Overall Blues Tech Expanded, but uneasy neighbors. One reason Granite Company settled down in Eureka was the sergeant's willingness to work with mutants, a tradition that exists since the fall of the rig. While obviously ghouls and super mutants were potential threats, Granite could be perfectly civil and pleasant, setting the example for those who followed. Indeed, Granite and the Portmasters went on more than one successful venture together, especially a spectacular raid on the great 80s raid of 2268. It was not to deny that the two groups of attention, in particular, Granite Company, as far as willing to work with the Republic, preferring a stand-up approach for the little town. But for now, this remains a theoretical disagreement. Both parties recognize that any conflict might ruin their little community, and neither group wants to invite the NCR north. And hey, some of the ghouls can make a pretty good rot gut. A rot coot. They may be muties, but there are muties. The Lair of the Bear. Although we are merely a humble town mercenaries or mercs, the NCR still has no fond feelings for the Enclave. The more overt a former Enclave presence, the more suspicion they will have. Currently, the NCR is concerned. Bribe NCR officials. For some money in the right hands, the bright eyed uh, uh, men from Shady Sands can be persuaded to look the other way. After all, don't they have bigger priorities? In this one, we lose political power, we lose research speed, and they get a buff, but hopefully it lowers their concern. Offer military equipment, of course. And then power armor construction. We repair more power armor, but there's a chance the NCR will become suspicious if we do. What better way to show that we are merely a mercenary company than to offer military equipment to the Republic? Aren't we all friends here? Flags of our fathers. The Shi, Navarro, is a new rice bowl. A way to break free of the NCR's choking embrace for the Republic. It's yet another frontier, an untamed wilderness for the Brahmin that bring wealth and power. But to Eureka? Oh boy, grab a beer. To Grand Company, it was the home of the Enclave. The best last hope for the wasteland. And to everyone else in Eureka, it put the bear directly on the doorstep. A launching point for any offensive the bear makes north. Not that there's anything wrong with their dear friends in Shady Sands, of course. Nevertheless, the argument can be carefully made that Eureka should consider taking contracts with their tribes of Navarro. Those peaceful people, and if they can't afford a contract, perhaps some sort of long-term agreement could be arranged. God bless the Gurika. Mercenary Dominus. Our role as the West Coast Mercs has begun to eclipse our humble fishing routes. The mountainous terrain of Eureka is a poor fit for building an industrial base capable of competing against Arroyo or the NCRs, many of whom must turn to more direct methods to reinforce their army. At base, we have a presence in the ports on the West Coast stretching from Capitol Hill to Baja. Oh, with that army speed, now we can actually make divisions, but that's going to cost us more. The specifics of this unit can be reviewed and recruit and deploy. Which we can't train anybody here because we have a mercenary army. But we receive cash from sending volunteers and leveling up their certain commanders. Go figure. Contact the sheep. Um, do we need steel? Or scrap metal? Uh, we're okay. Uh, a little slice of paradise, huh? While well, Southern California is a hot, arid landscape, Northern California is a green and pleasant land. They once called people as American as apple pie, and Eureka is one of the few places still to grow them in the region. Perhaps we can encourage immigration to this frontier? Hopefully. Nice. Only four research slots, but that's not bad. Um, I really don't want to use uh, caps as much as possible, just because we only make so much. Political power is probably more easily already available. Ooh, economic advisor. Uh, you lose money, get more caps, more, more research speed and construction speed. Uh, let's see, gold prospector. I want to go down here and get Sally Johnson. More political power would be very nice. Actually, can we send volunteers up here? Oh, the cause and the Brotherhood are fighting each other. Due to a modifier. Um, I guess we're on historical. Uncord states. So we can't send anybody. Is that a bug in the game? I think that might be a bug. I could be wrong, though. Because we're supposed to be able to send people, aren't we? Because I think there's a focus here for that. Um, a roll in the coast. We might do that one. One of the following must be true. Baha Bonanza. Umbra. Where is it in the cause? Phoenix Republic, huh? Cause. Ah, see? Here we go. The Washington brother had one or more volunteers from Eureka, as well as a cause. Requires our role on the coast. Those who uh, approach us with offers of employment often have striking similarities. A sour smile, impatient fidgeting, and an overwhelming holier-than-thou attitude permeates our employers. They pay us, and we offer them nothing but our temporary loyalty and expertise. I met you in a bar in San Francisco. 
San Francisco has long served as a gateway to the north, and in happier times served as a popular spot for Navarro's leave. Now Eureka hopes to attract investment and trade from the city. With several factions available, the Shiro always happy to trade for more produce and lumber and offer the technological services, but they were never friends of Granite Company's predecessors. Convinced that the Uncle almost nuked San Francisco. The apologists, for the part, know much about aviation, but not too much. I must admit, their religious views are strange even for the wasteland, still, they would work with the Granite Company. Who does Eureka pick? Blessings to the Emperor. She has something to this star father business. People? Or she contacts. Apologists for the people. Poor masters were elites. We probably want to go with the intellectuals in the end, though. Research speed? Sure, we'll go with the sheep, why not? I'm going to your theorist now, huh? That's not bad. This is different and unique. I like that. Even 11, huh? By it counts. Uncourt states. Organizational marketplace. But there's no map mode where you can see where you need to send you can send people to, right? I, I don't understand. I really don't. I'm sorry. I, I might not just be seeing it, but unless they disabled it, we have no managed subjects. Nothing here. Uh, can send volunteers. I'll put that too, because we should be able to send volunteers here, right? Manuals are nice. Site Y. Brother Olympian War. Yeah, they're war with a lot of people. Legion War. Deadline. No. So, I guess we just can't send people. I, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. Unless it's bugged. It's got to be bugged. Because they said, go up here. You can go to the Diplomacy tab. And you click on Send Volunteers. Because. I think it's just bugged. Apostles, Eureka, Umbra, the Battle of Bodega. Seems the bear might be reaching its limits. The Free Falcon Shi are now up in arms against the Republic's forces in Navarro, rolling back the NCR's grip on Northwest California. It's triggered a crisis in Eureka. As the town's residents debate on what to do, there's some who wish to remain neutral, but there are other point out the Free Folk uh, could be a valuable proxy for Eureka and help push the NCR south. Navarro could be a base to show California what it might have been if only the NCR didn't squash everyone who thought and dreamed of a different way. We're building mercenaries, not empire builders. Huh, you must stand up before the bear stands on us. The free folk and she are now up in arms. Navarro, rolling back into his grip. May neutral. The free folk could be a pro. Uh, we could try it. We're mercenaries. We could try that. Ooh, look at that. Nice. Still nothing here. Free folk are fighting them. So we can send volunteers there. Who's who saying? Cleon, huh? Three folk do not have unique folks, Jewish kinda sucks. I'm gonna send a you know, power armor. We can send okay, we can send everybody. Um I don't wanna send everybody, I don't wanna send infantry. I don't mind sending these two guys though. Payment receipt. Our volunteers have been sent out are currently en route to their future future host already. We've already received the down payment promised to us, yet the spoils of war are ever bountiful, increasing the capabilities of our generals will lead to future spoils for Eureka. They need to have a better, the devs need to have a better way of finding where these states are at. Green on the map mode? Oh, is it down here? Is it down here? Factions. Uh, core creation, in cap income. Trade nodes. Huh. Let's look at trade nodes more often and see where it has trade nodes when we need them. States, resistance, compliance, diplomacy. No, the diplomatic range is one I've never really seen before. Interesting, everything's really red. Captain Come Core Creation. Um, 
hmm. population, ideology, infrastructure, players, factions, diplomacy, resource, supply, states. Interesting. And we'll look at Trader one more time. So we're right next to a royal. We want a royal. So these are all part of them. Oh, even this one's interesting. Cool. I might want to bribe him though. Put a power offer salvage. Viral salvage. Here, do that one. The roll on the coast. Open for business. Oh, play some old tunes. We can do that one. That sounds like fun. Oh, got rid of one of the trees. Uh, sure. Uh, thought occurred. What if we were to sponsor our own radio network to offer people Granite Company's point of view? We can call it Eureka Radio for now. Your language is nice. We need that manpower. And this is where the old world blues tech expanded. Some mod comes in handy. Uh, oh, our future. Eureka stands at a crossroads. Is it just a watering hole for mercenaries and vagrants? Or could be a nation awakened from a slumber? Between the cynics and the dreamers lies a vast, vast gulf. Alright, so we're here. And we're going to have a good time. I just want you to like literally hold the line if possible. Because it looks like they are struggling. One, two, three, four, five ish. Um, so. Uh, give me a second here. So we're going to be expanding out just a little bit, see what we can do. Hold the line, maybe, perhaps. Rightful territory. Get more army XP, expand ourselves, get more experience. Lieutenant Scott Blair. Sure. You can be field marshal. There would be inspirational. You can maybe not yet. In time. Oh, so that's why they separated into Bajo territories. Okay, that makes sense. Baron funding, huh? Ah, that makes sense. A lot of sense from the devs then. Can you guys go here? Use that power armor and circle them, maybe. I want you to go here, here, here. We're gonna circle these two divisions up top first. Okay, you're fine. Help them out. Troll War and the Caucus Walkers. Splash Force move in and around. I want to start beating the crap out of this division here. Well, I'm just gonna play some old tunes. Nothing wrong with that. A little slice of paradise, right? Keep them in place. This guy should die pretty quickly. Very nice. And we got him. There you go. How about you go right? You don't just go right there. So they're moving down south, which is not good for us. We could honestly probably do what? Go right there. Let's get Tama. Get down here real quick. Honestly, they didn't want to leave? Okay. I always hated fighting uh, Eureka divisions, as far as I remember. Actually, if anything, go right here. If you can do that, that's very strong. Go right here, too. No, no, no. I want you to go here. Come on. No, no. You go there. Come on. Oh, my God. You're going to circle and destroy all those divisions. Very nice. Nice. And more mil uh, Let's grab this. Going north, the rush is on. Uh, let's see. I want you to go... Go here. Both of you can go here. We're going to get ourselves encircled a little bit. With the growth of the Californian economy, the zone opened up a new frontier to satisfy the appetites of Southern California. Until now, Eureka was too remote and had little to offer the lands down south. There was ample farmland for staples and no real market for luxury goods, but that has changed and it opens an interesting opportunity. 
Here we can grow to rely upon the resources and goods beyond manpower with some mercenaries, the fish of the sea, the fruits of the land, and perhaps with some hard work, the sweat of its people's brow. But to do that will require some more settlers. Granted, Port Master Smith has the strongest forces in Eureka at an impasse. Port Master Smith believes all are welcome and would encourage everyone to immigrate. But Grant believes that Eureka should limit immigration to a respectable sort. Hard-working, industrious, relatively successful peoples. We're not the Legion. We have no need of serfs. Ultimately, he will prevail. Um, perhaps, just perhaps, Grant could send some feelers out to old friends. The more the merrier. All are welcome. Selective enticements will get a better class of citizens. That's true. Welcome home, my fellow Americans. Ooh. I like that one. Guns, germs, or steel. I like the political power, though. Oddly, being at home to successful bands of mercenaries provides both protection and a ready market for a range of industries. We've had quite a few people express some interest in opening up shop in Eureka, but who do we favor? Poor master, 34. Ooh. Conciliatory gestures. Can't we come to an agreement? Surely peace between us, former members of the U.S. Army and ghouls as possible. Are they still... They're concerned. Okay. Offer military equipment. Um, how much equipment do we have? I don't even know. Why not? Scavenge, support, whatnot, and everything like this. Um, offer goals of vacation. A Vegas vacation. Ooh. Hash it out o over a caravan. Oh, that's pretty good. Cleanse Niradines. Drill Grant Company. Source NCR weapons. I kind of like this one. But I want to get more political power first. Um, I'm definitely going to go with this guy because we need the army XP. So if we can win here first, that'd be fan fantastic. You hold. Oh, you hold. Uh, you help support the deck. There you go. Nice job, guys. You know what, you hold, just help support the attack now. You know, you can help support the attack too. Oh, come on. Bruh. Are you kidding me? Now get all the way down here. Can't you just hold your own freaking line? Let's grab my army XP. Get your buds in there. Nice. Now we're just gonna go here too. Completely cut them off. Alright, so with that in mind, uh, get a little more organization first, and we're oh, gonna grab that. There we go. Help support the attack down there. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Nice. And now you can do that and help support the attack over here too. I'm really trying to grind out that army XP. Um, Lieutenant Scott Blair. He's inspirational, you know? And he's a melee hacker, did you know that too? Oh, he is now. Oh, who are we fighting down here? Oh, we're fighting Fusang too? Oh. Oh, whatever. Ho means Nevada to them. Nevada heard her call. The people of the region heard her plans to develop Eureka's economy, and we have three groups up with interest. Modoc sends a farming delegation, which will support our agricultural exports. While City sends some citizens, suggesting or cutting edge researchers who may, alas, dislike a ghoul population, and Reno sends some well funded chem manufacturers. Who do we pick? Farming ain't much, but it's honest work for, uh, it's honest work for other people. Well, City has some friends who move there. Obviously, we should work with the only group with resources. The business of Reading is business. Uh, Reading's barons are a lucrative source of capital investment, and we received offers from from some folks there. Ah, oh, suit me. Nice. How about? The goal is to destroy these soldiers. So we can take out the Navarro territories next. Bruh. Destroy the soldiers there. Oh, they got him. They didn't eat us. Nice. Can you just go in? Work is needed. It's very good. Um, a little ahead of time. Let's see. A little ahead of time. So we're going to come down here and grab uh, this. We should speed and refine warfare. Absolutely. 100%. Excuse me, I didn't tell you to stop, Enclave Remnants. And if anything, you go there too. And get more organization first. And now you're gonna help out. Uh, waste on economy? Uh, well, economy would be better. 
Uh, Western protection, military high command. Organization and whatnot well, would be very good. Chief of the Air Force, ooh. Chief of the Army, more attack. Ooh, but better power armor production. Eventually, hopefully, your industry won't be too bad. We don't need that. I'm gonna wait first for that. Followers of the Apocalypse. Miss Madiket, huh? What is this? The Bear Economy, okay. Huh. Technocrat, Gold Prospector. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Golden Gecko. A little more political power, which helps. A little more money. A slight bit more money, of course. Bribe NCR officials are concerned. How much money do we have? 44? That's not a lot. There you go. Beautiful thing, my friends. Old country, rot purgers. Standing army. Because I want the daily army XP gain. It's very nice. Absolutely beautiful. Ah, the business of Reading is business. As Eureka's economy opened, three investors approached the city's leaders with a plan. Two twins, Olivia and Cordell, came with the Red News. A battalion of clerics, guards, and builders behind two unique plans. Olivia's promise was simple, improve the infrastructure and improve exports to New California. Her brother, a student at Vault City University, proposed looking for gold, after all. Reading once had some, and the region was once the source of gold centuries ago. Surely there was some left, right? But there's also a third proposal, one that discusses granite. A super mutant known only as Francis claimed the super mutants from broken hills could use their skills to run the mine. From a strict cost-benefit analysis, the mutants would be an invaluable tool, but hadn't these monsters killed thousands? Olivia's solution is practical. Cordell signed me up. Ah, Olivia versus Cordell. Ah, that's why you have both Well Builder and Cordell Hunt, or some mutants can lift how much? You get Francis. Ooh, we lose, we lose intellectuals, huh? I kind of want to go with that one. Just to see what would, uh, what we could do with this one. Scavenger, that's not bad. More resources, than that. that's not bad actually. I know it's not an approved path, but still. Training time. Cap expense goes down 25%. That's a lot. Um, since we have power armor though, I'm gonna definitely want to choose one with power armor. More speed, less hardness, more speed and breakthrough. Is that it? Oh no, explosives, power armor. I only get one for power armor. Well, alright, we're less hard, but whatever. Get more breakthroughs, which is nice. Mercenary expansion. Simple logic dictates that the more conflicts we partake in, the more we stand to make. Therefore, our current range, limited to the immediate west coast, is far too limited. Establishing supply routes through the rivers and seas can broaden our horizon significantly. I love being a merc. Merc daddy. Beautiful. Ah, victory Navarro. The Chinese and the bear both sought to conquer Navarro, uh, the sheep, for grain and lumber, and the bear for Brahmin. But Navarro was their home, the last American outpost in the West. We cannot fly our flag openly, not yet. The bear will come, if anything, more focused on the region now. Already rumors and recriminations fly, whispers of the enclave's power armor in the woods. We lack the vertebrates that once scour the skies and face uh, s and states with air forces of their own. But at least for a day, the American flag will fly freely over Navarro. And we're back, and this time we won't leave. Welcome home, Commander. Oh! Oh, we should have just annexed them. Yeah, I'd become very suspicious too. Free folk. Oh, shnikes. Oh, I can't even convert these guys. Oh, dang it, that sucks. Six combo with anything for a buck. That's not quite me. Huh. <laughs> 20 bucks is 20 bucks, but still. Actually, how strong are... Oh. Our guys are coming back anyways. Um... Compliance. Well, we got a lot of compliance, which is really good. Followers of the Apocalypse, I don't really want them, but to keep people unsuspicious, we're gonna let them come in. Um, oh God damn. Right, 
go and train too. Um, no field commander. There you go, Lieutenant Scott player. Don't care. There's mobilize. Oh god. Hide activities. Oh crap. Oh okay. You need more money than that. Okay, that makes sense. Holy crap! Under new management. Uh, well, modify scavenging procedures. As a growing field of operations require a wider selection of clients and areas of deployment, we are forced to reconsider many of our scavenging practices. The service well this far will require additional forms to maintain our armies. Okay, the soldiers are back, which is good. Um, oh my god. Uh, our future? What are we supposed to do here? I just hope they don't discover us. Compliance is slowly going up too, but so is resistance, which sucks. We need more money, so... The growing port? Puerto Rico has been a mass, seen a massive increase in use over the past few years. Visitors now come and go regularly, not to mention mercenary expeditions that are launched from here. Expanding the port's facilities is an obvious next step. Exchange naval experience for army experience. Ooh, yes! That'd be, that'd be good. Take whatever we can get. Because right now we've got 14. That's not enough. Uh, is that game me? Sure, why not? Jacob Dwemer. Dwemer. What do I do about this? Is there anything we can't even do? I don't mind getting more stability, though. Still have to get to well-equipped army, though. 40%. Ouroboros. Oh, then we'll do the mercenary expansion if we possibly can. Because we can't quite send volunteers to these guys yet. Military drill's nice. Uh, don't need the manpower just yet. We're gonna come down here and get right, be more political power if possible. You have infantry. I'll just go with inspirational. It's easy to choose that one. Cause you got a lot of guys there too. Just choose inspirational. I'm not sure which way we're gonna go with them yet. Still mobilizing. Do that one and spend some money for more uh, infantry equipment. Seventy-five. It's only 75. Ruler, intellectuals. Alright, and the mercenary expansion. Bound for Mexico, Northern Expedition, River Convoys. Well, we probably want to do uh, the Northern Expedition. An even more savage land awaits for mercenaries of the north of Capitol Hill. The raiders here are well known for their barbarity and will certainly welcome additional help on the raids. All of the lessons we'll learn in this frigid wasteland will prevent us from becoming their future victims. Very true. It's a little out of time. Still working on that. Uh, work on? That's a lot of time too. There. Something like that. Alright, they stabbed themselves, that's fine. High activities. Operational security compromised. So what happens when we do offer subs from Navarro? Hope we can do something here. We have only 10 caps left. We're the Northern Expedition. I'm not, just not sure what we can do. We don't have the money for it. We don't have the military equipment for it. It's not like I can get rid of divisions anyway.
Is it worth Eureka? Just trying to hide activities, man. We don't exist. I don't know what you're talking about. Special force capacity multiplier? Sure. Why not? Scavenger, followers of the apocalypse. 1.3 political power every day. Leads people. We can have multiple directions we could really go in if we really wanted to. Uh, Eternal Sphere, not worth it. At least we're not worth it. Advanced technology propaganda. Nice. Nice. Sell excess convoys. Convoys are an important way for us to supply our mercenaries in this field, however. We uh, occasionally find ourselves producing just a wee bit too many. Pawning them off to private buyers or other coastal travels could be an easy way to raise money. Absolutely. Oh. Al I don't think we can send anyone to the Alamo. Ah, a bit too far away for us. Lone Star Civil War. Uh, Snowmad? Mad Trains? Didn't think so. Pleasant Dow Dundurn, Nordicon, that's all Canadian. Dam Busters, Canadian, Deadline, Deadline. Brother Giacomo War. We already solved that one, we can't do either one. June 15th. Oh, can we send them the volunteers? No. Sons of Kaga? Probably not either. Oopsie. Western aggression. Really, we can't even send these guys volunteers either? They're really not that far away. Oh, bro, that sucks. Because if you come over here, diplomatic range. I guess we just can't send anybody anything. Except for the free fighters. Huh. Weird. But okay. We could expel the riffraff, but probably not. Um, pretty normal stuff. Nothing too different. Grab you because you're not too different from everybody else. Bone dancers. All right. Nice. Harass portmasters, patrols, huh? Oh, the den. Ah. It'd be nice to send volunteers to these people, but we just can't. All these people killing each other down here. We could have made a quick buck, but I guess not. Alright, crowd control, maybe. Port equipment, definitely. Uh, bound for Mexico? Mexico isn't far from its current southmost position of the Baja. An expedition there will no doubt incur some difficulties, seeing as the language barrier could limit our ability to negotiate with potential employers, but the rewards could pay a dividend if the regions are unstable as some predict. North Coover, Whistler, Camlo. But they need a port as well. These guys all have ports. So it gets really bad up there, I guess. So we should be able to. Should we core these states? Hmm. On this side of the tree, Ooh, under new management. Together, the regulators, poor masters, illiterate, savage, tribals, and granite company drove the NCR out of Nav Navarro. A true inspiration for all advocates of tolerance, but we need to figure out how to handle hundreds of miles of territory. So, too big to fail. Oh, here it is. Here's too big to fail. The fate of your group decide whichever group is strongest. New generation. Oh, God. Remove mercenary army. Loser scavenging decisions still be unable to train new divisions. Things must get worse before they get better. Increase NCR suspicion. Orion Moraine returns to the fold. Brahmin ranches. 
You lose political power and stability for a year. Get 120 caps. Oh, you get some cores here. Settlers or settlers. Navarro is still rich on Tame Frontier. But how do you get settlers to come here given that we just had a civil war and drove out the NCR? Now core. Come to Navarro before Navarro comes to you. Incre increase NCR suspicion, which is not good. Take the salvage. The layer of the bear. Oh, there's a something going on over there. Petro Chico. People killing each other all around here. How about Mexico? Ah, ranchers are going bye bye. Yeah, distance is just too far away. I want to get involved, man. Oh, hello. What if we send the NCR volunteers? That would be kind of, uh... Can we... Can we do that? Would that break us? Payment received! I mean... Okay. Now we have the money. You know what? We send you volunteers, and you pay us for the money. The, oh, they're only like concerned now. Oh crap! No, we don't have the money for it. Dang it! Oh, I need new management. We'll do that one next time. Uh, guns come quickly. Scavenge infantry equipment. Decision will be taken 15 days, or get more guns instead. Extra guns, or take 15 days. Rapid, take 15 days. Third option: to obtain equipment from other two options. Scavenge fighter planes. Decision will turn 15 usable planes. Ooh. Scavenger to general. Scavenger 51 becomes a unit leader. Gain cash from leveling them up, just like our starting generals. Scavenge power armor. Spare tires. Huh. Add inexperienced pilots. Clear abandoned airports. Inexperienced volunteers. Air, air. Interesting. Um, since I did that by accident. Totally by accident. River convoys. As of now, our supply ships are only a bit built to dock at major ports. And we'd have serious trouble reaching our mercenaries through rivers. We can take time to redesign our new ships in order to better accommodate rivers, allowing us to establish a presence deep within the rivers of Oregon. Uh, let's do this one first. Ship exporting scheme. Our last attempt to sell our convoys turned out quite well. We can devote our time to this idea. Hopefully turning it an easy way to, to bring in continuous funding. Because we need more money. And I'd rather have the NCR not be concerned with us. Right? And that just makes sense to me. Uh, prioritizing army training. Uh, we must be certain that our naval officers uh, act on behalf of our land forces, rather than at their own volition. Prioritizing army training will do that, although it may leave some, many of our officers feeling neglected. Well, oh well. Ooh, can we send you soldiers too? Darn it. Uh, NCR, we have no one here. Um, totally no one here. Uh, not Enclave soldiers at all. Totally not. Totally, 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 totally not. That's why I said I don't want to spend too much money. 28's not enough. Because you get scavengers for 10, but it's for 30 days. Dubious prospects. Motorized. Massive scavenging effort. Support equipment. Maybe get maintenance companies for our soldiers, perhaps? You are almost completely destroyed. Here, how about? You're not going to level up very much, but that's alright. I still want you to grind up more army XP, though. Nice. No wonder it wasn't going up. <laughs> alright, not bad. Then again, I don't want to lose too much money by switching to anything else. Ship exporting. Uh, let's go to that one. So, where's that option now? Sell so convoys, 10 for 10. Oh, 10 for 10. Oh, heck yeah. What convoys we got? We got 44. Pfft. We're going to get plenty of money. Plenty of funds. Oh. Um, you only have two Enclave Power Armor units, but I'm going to be honest. Let's just go Pain Train. I already know we're going to have more than enough. 
There we go. Um, it's gonna hurt our money wise. 20% base co base country node income. But I'd rather have a few more factories to use. Whatever. Give me a hill spider, a mountaineer. Oh yes, please. They're still concerned. Which is not good, but whatever. Help them out. Beautiful. Sell more convoys. We're gonna always be selling convoys from here on out now. Uh, 50 is not bad. I like 50. Lose 75. Lose a little bit of manpower. Oh boy. Hmm. Save our money for now, cause we need. We're gonna need the money. Power our construction sounds like fun too. Oh crap! No, I wanted to read that. No. Indigestion. With a victory in Navarro, we pulled off a miracle. We drove the NCR back and claimed Navarro as our buffer. Granite's men are setting up shop in Navarro, but now we're running into a bit of a mess. There are still thousands of people in the territory who hate each other, kind of like in every nation today, in a land with vast potential and promise. A withdrawal from the region, or the NCR or she will simply pour back in, and of course, if we manage it properly, everyone in Eureka will be set for life. What do we do? I didn't sign up for nation building. Oh, we get a core of Eureka. And move a capital there. Nice. So we need more money for this one. So Brahmin ranches? One way to get the NC on the NCR's good side would be allow the Brahmin barons to lease land in Reading. This would be somewhat controversial with the tribals in the area, but we'll look out for the interests in a way Shady Sands did not. And Aaron Kimball is smart enough to recognize that half a loaf is better than none. And also we're done with the rapids. Oh, I know it sucks. I wish we weren't done with them, but whatever. Um, new generation. So after that, they'll do settlers for, or settlers. And new generation would be good as well. Um, but just need more money. Um, say aircraft designs, of course. Did this reason earlier? Our scavenging external of a number of blueprints and text related to the functions of airplanes. Miraculous contraptions capable of remaining in flight and using engines strapped to them wings. How's that? This sounds possible to many, but this technology could have military applications if used properly, of course. And there goes the rip breakers. Goodbye, rip breakers. Salvage operations. You know, there's old, some old ships that seem to wash up on the shore. Outside Eureka. Perhaps we could take them apart uh, from metal. I bet we can find a use for it. Of course, we, re we read about uh, river convoys already. Which is nice. Lower Snake River expansion. Our mercenaries report traders. Uh, speaking of a variety of exotic tribes located up upstream for current outposts in Oregon's River, they talk to men who worship steam, force men who walk with beasts, and unholy cannibals driven mad by ancient devices. It seems to be a prime business opportunity, and we would be fools to pass it up. Amen. We don't need more manpower. Factory output wouldn't be bad either, but uh, we're going to continue going with what? Research speed? Yes. Ah, sell them convoys. Uh, concern opera metric equipment? Yes, please. So the cost of this keeps going up, which sucks. Brahm ranches. Settlers ore. Settlers. We got to get them cores, though. We have to. 100%. Sure, why not? And yes, I pressed my spacebar very hard. So hopefully it goes okay. Let's see anything else. Our future, of course. Maybe we could do this to 50 for 3%. For 10 manpower. Uh, only costs that, so why not? Hey, 6% for the Granite Company. Love it, Port Master Smith. Absolutely love it. Oh, there's the opposite territories. Where you at? I wish we could convert these guys, but we can't. Sucks. Um, here, you're already inspirational. That's good enough for us for now. Let's sell some convoys, yes please. Yes sir. Massive scavenging effort. No, that'd be nice, but still. Um, settlers or settlers? Increase suspicion, which no, it's not good. What is this? Learning from the past. New Orleans workshops. Ooh, kind of like that one. The NCR has desecrated the armories and workshops in Navarro, but there's no reason. We can't get them up and running again. Is there? Come to Navarro before Navarro comes to you. If we want to rebuild Navarro, we need to do so in a pluralistic uh, manner that benefits every stakeholder. In practice, this means making sure everyone gets a slice of the California cake, but what to do? How to tame this wilderness? The poor mass would simply open the frontier to all who want to come, including those with an eccentric past. The regulars want to wish to import slaves for crash, industrialization and mining, and profit off their labor. Granted, for part, Wants to attract a better class of citizens by emulating the vault city model. Which all we pursue? Welcome home, new citizens. Ooh. They're unpaid interns who can't quit, not slaves. Everyone here has a checkered pass. What's a few more? Welcome home, new citizens. Ooh, a royal's at war. Oh boy. 
Ooh, who, should, who do we want to win here? Oh man. So to form the the special nation and annex everybody else around us, a royal Packers and the she as well. Eastern Umbra, huh? Hmm. Uh, well, royal needs to die, right? One last word. She's territories. Ooh, plasma stuff. That sounds like fun. Um, sky's the limit. Ooh! Back in black. Advanced power armor. Remember the rig. Part, ports without end. For the content. Um, mutant threat. Packers and Arroyos. Eastern Umbra. Because they have Umbra here. Uh, I don't think Umbra has anything here unique. Oh, they're by Dmitry Constantinopolis. Alright, well. Can I send you guys? Uh, we do that. Eh, whatever. Here. Payment received. They might die before we can even do anything there, anyways. Um, uh, alone? A gift? Yeah, we definitely can't spend anything right now. Is it gonna. This might break them. But it might be really good for army XP. And I'm here for army XP. I kinda wanna do that guy, just because it's unique. Okay, do him anyways. This is probably a bad idea to do it like this. In the meantime, who cares? We're not here to lose, we're just here to have a good time. Nice, glides. Uh, a little ahead of time there. Maybe that one. Concentration of force is good. Grab that one. Now they're on the assault. I just want to defend, man. I don't really want to push them out anywhere. But if we have to. Now there's two divisions there. Cross workshops are nice. Go with Umbra tri Tribals. Our other neighbors, Umbra's recently begun to modernize and adapt from tribal animalists to a semi industrial nation. This hasn't been an easy road for them, as the current involvement in their affairs shows whether their instability be a boon or bane for us can only be shown by time. Oh, wow, look at that. We actually have enough guns. More power armor. Oh, that's fine. Nice. Alright. Some convoys. There you go. Quest aid for medical tech. I don't necessarily have to. So do they have a trial, salvage operations, a new generation, huh? We can't scavenge and still be unable to train your divisions. Can we make more money still there, though? That's my question. Let's go. Decision to buy weapons from the Van Graffs at the risk of alerting the bear. So sad. A proper uniform. Decision to repair power armor at the risk of alerting the bear. But who cares what they think? Should probably take this one last. An army with a nation. Obviously, the answer will become more suspicious for the mass power armor units. Enables editing of all templates of the country and training of disbanding units belonging to them. Suspicion. Well, that's not good. Up from north to south, investments are going to pay off. Our mercenaries have recently seen employment across the entire west coast, building a stronger reputation than we could have ever expected. Glory to Eureka. Beyond Honduras. Ooh. Our warriors have heard the tales of the raider led anarchy present throughout Central America. Finding stable clients may not be possible in that jungle wasteland, but conducting raids of our own could yield serious benefits. Prior to this, joint dr force drills. Our naval forces often act independently of our land forces. This can be often leading to serious problems, and sometimes even disaster, as expected. Naval reinforcements will fail to arrive on time. Complex training drills should alleviate this issue, and we'll learn from the past. Granite Company once worked for a force with fusion plants in the best quantum mud pie west of the Mississippi. The regulators once helped swim the richest town in California, but uh, now Eureka must get on by scavenging and limited equipment like everyone else. Surely, there is someone who will work for us. 
But I think we're going to end the episode right there. As we might have broke these guys a little hard. Because uh, I think they're supposed to be able to take these guys over. But oh well. If you enjoyed the video though, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Please go check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow. Let's see what else we can do with good old Eureka. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.